What's up, IndyCar fans? David Land here, bringing you the first review of a 2016 IndyCar on my channel. This is the Pippa Man promotional diecast. Not really promotional, it's available on Pippa Man's shop and at shop.indycar.com and uh, at the races. You can check all those links out in the description. I usually don't do that, but people always ask me where to get indie cars. I'm going to uh, provide that info for you. So, this car, what's notable about it is it's on the new Chevy Aero Kit mold that everybody's talking about, everybody's very excited about. My friend Robbie Noonan, Race Day 2011, you should check him out. He uh, picked this car up for me at St. Pete, so big props to him. I really appreciate that when, uh, when guys help me out. So there is a uh, shout out to him because he's my pal and he helped me out. Let's quickly look over the box because the next time you see this car, it'll be out of its box. And naturally, uh, green light Indy cars are impossible to get back in the box. So there you go. You get a trading card, Pippa Man. And here is the beautiful Arrow Kit uh, die cast. And on the back, of course, the trading card that we'll see later. And not a whole lot to write home about. It's not too different from last year's packaging, but it's just different enough that it is is notable. So this is David Land on YouTube. Let's get into 2016 IndyCar Diecast. So when uh, we heard about the new Aero Kit mold being used by Greenlight, the last car most of us expected to be the first uh, look at this car was a Pippa man car for a couple reasons. Number one, we've never gotten a Pippa man car on 164 scale before. We did get one last year in the 118 range, uh, but never in 164. And number two, Pippa's never driven a Chevrolet before. She's always with Dale Coyne Racing, and that team always has a Honda. So why did we get a Chevy Aero Kit? Well, it's not technically a Honda. This is a promotional piece, I believe, put out by Pippa. Um, obviously because she wanted to get people die-cast. Uh, obviously there's a demand for it, um, and I think it's a great idea because uh, for a lot of reasons, um, you know, this is also going to give the little girls a car that they really like um, because obviously girls kind of prefer, prefer pink things, and so uh, it's great to see that coming out, but let's be honest, um, some of us guys like the pink cars too, uh, whether we want to admit it or not. But um, this is a really fantastic aero kit here. Um, I'm really pleased with how it's turned out from Greenlight, though I do have a couple complaints, and we'll get to those here in just a second. But on the whole, I think this does a really good job of capturing um, the Chevrolet aero kit from the Indianapolis 500 last year. Um, it's got all the details that I expect to see on it. Um, especially considering it has to be a generic aero kit, so some of the more advanced aero things that they were starting to try last year um, are not on it, which is fine with me. It's an accurate representation of the generic super speedway aero kit last year, and that's awesome. So here is a look at the card really quickly that you get. The only difference between last year's uh, trading card and this year's trading card, I think, are the round edges here. I don't remember those last year. And uh, here is the back, if you want to read about Pippa, um, there you go. So, let's take a quick look, closer look at the aero kit and all the things that we need to go over here. Obviously the wing looks uh, just right, exactly how you'd expect it to look, exactly how it needs to look. Obviously Chevy ran a pretty big old front wing last year. Um, and I would assume they're running it this year as well, unless they uh, choose to use one of their um, aero kit boxes to improve their front wing. We will see later on. Obviously the Firestone pink tires uh, there. Um, pretty cool. Um, this is, I think, the first time we've gotten pink walled Firestone tires. Um, and by the way, those people who may say that's not accurate, it actually is. Pippa Man's uh, car usually when it's got the Susan G. Komen branding, while this one does not technically have Susan G. Komen branding, unless that says it right there, we'll see. Travel for the cause. I don't know if that's a Susan G. Komen thing or not. It's kind of hard to read. Um, but yeah, 
Um, this car usually has the pink uh, sidewall tires when they're pushing it into the pit lane. So that's very interesting. So another big difference here between the, uh, the old mold and the new mold is the fact that we've got these big honking holes in the underfloor. That was in a safety improvement last year or the, uh, yeah, at the beginning of last year uh, to try to keep the cars on the ground. It worked really well, didn't it? Um, but yeah, so as we move further on back, obviously you can tell the side pods, very sculpted, very nice looking. And then you've got the little uh, side pod flick here uh, that goes over the back wheel. Then we get to one of my big complaint areas. Um, oh yeah, also a new engine cover. You see a much more sleek engine cover, much thinner than the DW12. I've actually got another DW12 here. I'm going to show you it in just a second. Um, but there's a reason I'm not showing it to you yet. Um, my big complaint right here is um, we're getting some bumper wonkiness at the moment. Unfortunately, um, that's something that uh, Greenlight's kind of play, been plagued with for a while. Um, but it's not terribly bad, and it looks... I mean, it's really just one one side, so I'm not sure if that's a pa something that's, uh, that can be fixed with the packaging or what. But uh, these are big, big old piece of plastic here. Um, that's another thing. Most of this car is metal, um, and the tires are rubber. The bottom of the car, metal. Top of the car, metal. This rear wing, which is little tiny and really well detailed, also is also metal. So most of this car is metal, by the way. Metal and rubber, and you're paying about the same amount. $9 is the... Uh, usual retail price on these. So you're paying about the same amount that you would for a Lionel uh, NASCAR from the Gold Series. So pretty much you're getting, a, in my opinion, a better deal. But yeah, just a really, really good job by Greenlight here. I think I cannot wait to see the official cars start to come down the line. Um, but it's great to see that Pippa got this car out as early as they did. So, that I mentioned that I wasn't going to show a DW12 off yet, well now I'm going to show you it. Because the DW12 mold is not going away this year. I mentioned that Pippa has a Honda for this year. Now were they to make her regular Honda powered a Dale Coyne racing car, it would be on the DW12 mold. You can see, um, I'll show it off to those who have not seen my other videos. Um, obviously, there's some differences, big time differences, particularly with the underfloor here of the DW12. But pretty much, um, this is what we're going to be seeing representing Honda cars this year. This is the mold that they will be using um, because they just didn't have the time, apparently, to make a Honda Aero Kit mold. So we've got these are what you're going to be looking at for IndyCar Diecast in 2016. The Chevrolet cars and promotional cars, including the 100th running promotional car, will be on this Chevy Aero Kit. And the Honda powered cars will be on this generic DW12 body, at least for this year. Some people were annoyed about that. I don't have a big problem with it, especially when you look at um, a DW12 chassis up next to the Super Speedway version of the Honda Aero Kit. There's not a gigantic difference. The filthy casuals won't be able to tell the difference. Um, it's just really our, us hardcore people that are kind of annoyed by that, but whatever. Um, it's a really great job by Greenlight here. Again, I think it just looks fantastic. Let me know in the comments if you're going to be picking up uh, any IndyCar diecast this year, uh, particularly this one because it's the subject of the video. But I think it looks great, and I'm really happy that uh, we finally got some accurate uh, aero kit uh, sculpting uh, for these cars because it's just been long overdue, and I'm really excited to see green lights range this year. I will be doing a IndyCar buyer's guide pretty soon. Pringles Cup Series on Instagram uh, suggested I do that. And I thought, you know what, that's a good idea. So I will be doing that. It'll be much more detailed than this video, uh, giving you all the information, what you need to know buying IndyCar diecast this year. So thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate that you've watched this. Again, thanks to Robbie, my pal, Race Day 2011, for getting me this car uh, early on so that I didn't have to wait and uh, pick it up at a later date. Um, but again, leave a like on the video, uh, leave a comment if you're excited or not excited about IndyCar Diecast this year, I want to hear it. And uh, thanks for watching. We're going to see you in the next video and hopefully lots more IndyCar Diecast coming soon.